There is a cutscene during the story mode of King of Fighters 14 where two characters are discussing that there has been a long time since one of these tournaments has been held, and there is a bit of a wink and a nod to the fans that have been waiting for SNK to release one of these new games for a while. A few years ago, SNK pulled back from the video game market to focus on Pachinko, however, as there have been new regulations and as most young people aren't really interested in Pachinko, they have decided to come back into the video game market with their biggest franchise, which is King of Fighters. And it has come with some pretty interesting timing as uh, it is very well set up to take advantage of Street Fighter's disappointing entry into the series. So if the first thing that SNK was known for was this very complex, uh, high skill fighting games, the second was their Amexin pixel art. And it is very obvious when you look at any footage or pictures from King of Fighters 14 that they are not using their amazing pixel art, rather they're using these 3D models on a 2D plane. And those models do not look good at all. They look fine in game, don't get me wrong, you can see them in motion and not necessarily notice that anything is going on. However, once the game stops uh, and once you're in cutscenes, it becomes very evident. Cutscenes in particular make them look like they are these plasticky figures that are about two generations behind the competition. Whereas when you have a winning screen, um, you will see them in their full HD glory completely frozen and you are able to see just every single flaw that these models have. There are a lot of reasons why they made a switch from pixel art to 3D modeling. Um, good pixel art takes a very long time which in business terms means that it's very expensive. But it also has some other drawbacks. Pixel art is much less flexible than modeling when it comes to making alterations and making new skins. And if you look at the menu of the King of Fighters 14, you will notice that there is a store button. Now this store button actually links to PSN and there is currently nothing there. However, I am very sure that they will be using this in order to add customs and other extras into the game. And that is just a lot easier to do with 3D modeling. Despite the look of the game, SNK veterans will feel completely at home once they actually start fighting. The returning characters move and feel the same way that they did in previous games. And you are going to be just doing super cancels, dashing, uh, chaining combos in on time. Um, it seems that SNK is aware of this rushing turn of fighting games that are trying to simplify things for newcomers because they've added a few more things to make newcomers competent. The biggest one is this auto combo system, very similar to the Arxis uh, auto combo systems, where you're close to an enemy and you press light punch. It will just make a combo uh, that culminates in a very weak super move that you can pretty much use reliably over and over. Um, in PvE, this move is fairly useful. So when you take this online, you will notice that a good season player will be able to block these combos every time. So what's happened is that the skill floor to be competent in the game is lower. However, they have kept the very complex skill ceiling that SNK games are known at the same level. And what this is going to do, this is going to make players feel good about themselves at one point, however, hit a very steep uh, difficult to spike once they try to take their game online and they start meeting players that are experienced and they have had time with fighting games in the future. So in order to try to make up for this, SNK has put in King of Fighters a very robust tutorial system that will teach you the entire system from beginning to end, uh, going from basic movement to how to super cancel uh, into a maxed up combo into a mega combo. So this will be general for all of the players, however, once you start getting into specific characters, there will be a trial mode that will ask you to perform complex combos. And that way you are able to kind of get used to your character, but it's framed in a way that is more of a competitive sort of thing where you're competing against yourself to see how well you can perform these very um, complex maneuvers. It's not going to teach you all of the subtleties of the character. The game expects you to spend time fighting online and offline in order to master it. It will go a long way to close the skill gap there is going to be between new players and newcomers. Additional modes include survival, which will pit your single character against a a uh, group of one-on-one -on -one matches uh, with a one-round winner-take-all type scenario and uh, to see how many battles you can win. Of course, 
um, your single health bar is not going to be completely filled up every time that you win, rather it's just going to fill up a portion. And so the challenge here is to try to fight conservatively and master your gauges so that you are able to take as little damage as possible and move on to the next round without having a huge handicap and try to win as many fights as possible. There is also my personal favorite of the side options which is the uh, the time attack. The time attack will pitch you against 10 different opponents again in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, winner take all one route scenario where you will be asked to clear this as fast as possible but at the same time you will still have the one bar that won't regenerate completely after every fight. So what you have to do here is to try to attack as fast as you can, as hard as you can using all of your gauges but at the same time not recklessly so that you won't take so much damage that you won't be able to stand the chance on the next fight. All of this is very interesting but the real clown jewel of the single player is the story mode. I was a bit skeptical when I saw there was an, an arcade mode uh, in KM Fighters, however the story mode is really an arcade mode with the extra fluff of having some cutscenes and this awesome flavor text between characters that know each other talking trash um, before they fight. It is the very classic King of Fighters mode of 3-on-3, three three, whoever wipes the first team out wins. You can pick a custom team if you want, and by a custom team I mean a team made up of three random players. You will get this generic um, cutscenes and ending um, reward. However, when you pick one of the pre-made teams, as for example the uh, Fatal Fury team with Terry and Andy Bogart and Yuhi Hashi, you will also uh, get some extra cutscenes and an extra ending. You will also unlock photos and audio, so there's plenty of reason to keep coming back into a single player mode. But of course, the main draw of any fighting game is really the PvP, the player versus player combat. There is a local player versus player combat in uh, King of Fighters 14. Um, but there is also, of course, the now m mostly mandatory online multiplayer. Just as a caveat, I'm going to talk about the performance of the online now, and I have to say that this was done on pre-release code, so it was in the final servers, and this is, after all, 2016, and this is a game with an online component launching in 2016, so you can expect that there will be issues with it at launch, as there usually are, and I'm pretty sure they're also going to get patched out eventually. While most of the time the matchmaking worked very well and the netcode was usually fairly robust, there were some very heavy lag spikes sometimes which would lead to drop frames. There were also these very weird loping matches where it looked like we were fighting underwater, everything was just kind of slower. Again, this was done on pre-release code, so I'm not sure this is going to be the experience that you get and it's very difficult to gauge now. Um, there is entirely possible that SNK is preparing for this, but at the same time I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, launch day issues, or even issues that last two or three weeks after launch. That being said, if you really like complex fighting games, and if you know that SNK has delivered this in the future, then you know that King of Fires is a game that you're going to want to pick up. There are plenty of reasons to keep coming back. The story mode is great, and the pictures and all the other extras were interesting. I didn't feel that they would keep me playing just for that, but there were nice rewards to have for completing the game. The combat in this game is very deep, but with the new changes it is also very accessible. And I can see this becoming a very thriving uh, fighting community in the future. So if you're looking for a deep and complex game that will require your time and your investment to master, then you can certainly do worse than King of Fighter 14. If you're also a newcomer who was always looking to get into the King of Fighter games or just SNK games in general and was kind of put off by its complexity, this is probably the easiest game to get into in the entire franchise. So I would say go ahead and pick it up. And we're giving this one a 4 out of 5.